I have an area on my desk over here where I charge things, and uh, over the years it has gotten much messier and much cleaner. Right now it's actually in a very clean state, uh, and that's mostly because I put in this guy. This is a Sabrent 8 port, 4 USB-C and 4 USB-A charger. And I posted it on social media and a bunch of people were asking like, what if you plug in a Raspberry Pi? Most of these chargers, multi-port chargers, have like one PD circuit or something. And if you plug in another item to charge, it'll basically shut off all the ports momentarily and then bring them back up. So I wanted to see if this one is smart enough to not do that so that you could use it to run like four Raspberry Pis uh, or four other SBCs and four other things and charge things and plug things and unplug things without killing your whole setup because uh, an unexpected shutdown is never fun. So right now I'm charging this guy, the little blower. I have a video on that, the AC27. Uh, I'm going to plug in this Raspberry Pi that I'm setting up as a time server with its little GPS module. More videos on that coming. And then I'm also charging some batteries, some double A's off this uh, micro USB that's coming out of one of the USB-A ports. So you can see that the two are charging right now at 13.6 watts and 3.4 watts. Uh, that's another reason I wanted to buy this to see how, you know, to see the rate at which things are charging. Right now, for my desk, I usually use this little guy. This is a third reality smart outlet that I tie in with Zigbee into my home assistant system. Not only can I remotely power things on and off through that, I can also uh, monitor the, the use of power over time and, and get energy readings out of it. So anyway, I'm going to plug this Pi in. So this is coming out of port C1A. And I'm not going to do an exhaustive test of every single port on here to see if they all are like that, but I'm going to plug this in. We'll give them some networking. Right there. And uh, it's booting up, and you can see that the Pi is using about 3 to 5 watts as it's booting. It'll probably settle in around 3.5 or 3.6 watts. Uh, but now if I, well, here, let, let me connect to it on here. I'm going to SSH into minitime.local, and uh, we'll do uptime, and I can watch that. So watch, oops, watch, watch uptime. So now it's going to keep updating, and if it goes down, we'll see this will stop counting up. So I'm going to unplug this one, which is, where is this plugged into right now? It's plugged into... Oh, I guess I could look up here, C2B. So I'm going to unplug this, and we'll see if the Pi shuts off. It did not, so that's good. And then I'm going to plug it into C1B, so I'll plug it into a different port. And I can see that it's starting to negotiate, and it's charging 14 watts. So that didn't shut down the Pi. It's still running. I'm going to pop back in here really quick. Uh, I'm inserting this video before the end of the actual first thing I recorded because while I was editing, I noticed I didn't, I, I, I think that they split the power down like this side and this side. So I also plugged and unplugged things from both sides different ways. And uh, no matter what, this Pi still stayed powered on the whole time. So I think that their logic is per port, which is great. Uh, and speaking of which, when I was doing that, I accidentally hit this button. So watch this. This button right here, it's, I, I thought it was just this screen and then it would like show the screen saver that says Sabrent. But if you press it again, it actually goes in and gives you all of the uh, different uh, information per port, which is, I mean, this information is gold. I want this information in Home Assistant. Please Sabrent, if you hear me put Zigbee on this thing, uh, give me access to all this. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to the regularly scheduled video portion. And that's very nice because the uh, the previous multi-port USB-C charger I had would turn off all the ports and if you plugged in a new thing it would renegotiate USB-C PD. And uh, I'm going to try, I'll try another Pi as well. So, you know, switching ports on there, it's still running the Pi, it did not shut off. And I'll, I'll try swapping out this USB-A plug too. Why not? If I'm a little out of breath it's because I was just tidying up a GPS antenna install outside hang around a big ladder and everything. Anyway, so that looks like it's doing fine. Whoa, C2B went up to 100 watts momentarily. That's funny. So we're still good on that. I'm going to plug in this Raspberry Pi, so let me grab another USB-C cable. I'll grab this little magnetic one that I have. It's nice because it magnetizes, so if you set it down, it like wraps itself up. 
that's a cool feature. Then I'll plug it into this port. And let's plug it into this Pi 5. And the Pi 5 does do USB-C PD. Uh, it just asks for 5 amps, but if your device can't supply 5 amps at 5 volts, it does 3 amps. So let's plug this one in. Okay. We're booting up, and this one is still running. That's still charging. Nothing. We had no issues there. That Pi is booting it at 2.4 watts. So that's nice. And the other one has settled in at 2.9 to 3.1 watts, it looks like, this uh, Time Pi. And you can see here that it is still up, no problem. So nice job to Sabrent. I will link to that in the description. They have not paid anything. They didn't send this to me. I bought this thing because I was just like, I want a better USB-C charging station that also has USB-A ports because all of my charging stuff is over here for everything. So whenever I have a camera battery or whatever, I plug it in over here to one of these cables in this little uh, fingery thing. I don't remember who makes that. If I can find it, I'll link to this in the description too, because some people have always asked about these little guys. I have I have little cable holders on every corner of every desk so that I can always have a place to stash a cable when I need to without having to bend down and reach down to the ground to get it. Anyway, there you go. That's, that's not a review. Another cool thing is uh, this has a wall mount too, uh, but I'm not using that. I just used one of these little, these little two-prong things and I set it in there. It has an internal power supply so it just has a plain cable going back. It doesn't have a big external power brick. So that was another reason I liked it. It is pretty chonky and heavy, but I think of that as a feature. Anyway, see you later.